Hey guys, welcome back to Five Nothing Hundred Nothing. I am Fug It. And that stands for the fittest underdog guru using intelligent tactics. And today, guys, I want to talk to you about something um, that I like to call everything or everyone is in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Now, that came from a speech I gave at a friend's wedding. Um, God, it's got to be 12 to 15 years ago now. And uh, uh, she was a good friend of mine through the 90s. And uh, she was getting married. And she didn't want her father to give her away. She wanted me to give her away at her wedding. And I was very honored by that. So, um, anyways... That was the title of the speech that I gave. And I hadn't really thought about it a lot over the years, but I remembered um, that I, there wasn't a dry eye in the house when I gave the speech. And it really wasn't intended to be really um, sentimental or um, emotional, but it really was a um, um, pretty emotional speech. And I think the takeaway is I, I wanted to revisit it now to um, kind of share that a little bit with you guys and uh, give back that gift and get you thinking about your life and some of the things that happen and how you can kind of look at all of it and um, kind of put it in perspective or to categorize it, I guess is the best way to say it. But, um, you know, everything's in your life for a reason. And I mean, you know, what are those reasons? You know, one of them is to grow as a person, you know, if you think about um, where you're at in your life now, um, and everything you've experienced, whether it's been uh, what you perceived as good things, or bad things, or some some lucky breaks, or um, some tragic things, you know, um, some loss of family, what what have you, or friends or loved ones. Um, there's a lot of growth. If you choose to look at it as such, um, it can make you stronger, or it can, uh, and that can define you, or it can cripple you. And everyone has a different, um, depending on when you go through those things in your life, it can affect you in, in a lot of different ways, but um, it's there for growth. The other thing is, it's there for the reason of learning. You know, you learn with everything that's come into your life or everyone that's come into your life. And, you know, when you learn, you now can either recognize something that was um, really healthy or something you really enjoyed about that particular friendship or relationship or the, um, or the, the business deal or whatnot, but you learn from it. If you choose to reflect and to take, what are the takeaway lessons from that situation or that job. Um, other reason that things or people are in your life is uh, for you to give. You know, you have a gift in you that you should be giving. And everyone has different giftings, you know. Some people are good encouragers. Others um, are, um, you know, like to give gifts or like to give of their time or give of like affirmation and attention what have you. And um, sometimes it's your knowledge. You know, sometimes you've got like the gift of like a therapist and you can, you know, listen all day and give and give. And, um, you know, sometimes you get the feedback that it's making a difference or it made an imp a significant impact in somebody's life. Um, but if you've got that gift, it gets recognized. So you have to see that reason. Um, the other time, you know, not only to give, but to take. You know, there's a takeaway for you uh, if you choose to see it and look for it, you know, and you can take away things that make you a better person, take away things that help you realize that, you know, you shouldn't settle, you know, for less than something. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's interesting because, you know, there's um, a lot of different reasons. And those are just a few that really like stuck out to me things that um, were my takeaways from my own speech. Um, things and people are also in your life for a season. And that could mean anything, you know, from 
school, a job, uh, a relationship, or maybe a hookup or a fling. Um, and dare I say, um, even your children are really there for a season, uh, at least in that state of their, their adolescence and growing, um, because there comes that point in time when they are going to leave or they have left the nest and the relationship with them changes. You know, if you did your job as a parent, it was to raise them to be independent and not rely on you. And that can be hard if you spent 18, 20, whatever years um, with this person two decades or so in your life, sometimes more than that, um, really relying on you. And it's not that you're, you don't love them, but you're raising them to be independent and to be able to survive in this world without you. So there's times where it's a season, you know, and um, I choose to like, I, I think it's funny as you get older um, and you take the time to reflect on things, it's, um, you know, you look at when the seasons end, you know, or you go through a job transition or you leave a relationship and you get in another one or divorced or whatnot. And I think sometimes we look back and our um, initial reaction is, is hurt, loss, um, maybe fear. But if I think if you take the perspective of it's almost like it was a good book and you read the book and you finally got to the last chapter of that book. And for whatever reason, the situation changed and that season was over in your life. You know, you, you got to be able to take that and appreciate what it brought to you and what you learned and what you took away and what you gave and put that on the shelf and be okay with turning the page or going to that next place in your life and transition and grow um, because it's very easy to get stuck in um, emotionally, you know, at a, in a time in your life when if you stay there, um, everything changes. Relationships change, jobs change, your health can change, it all changes, and you have to be okay with that. You may not like it, but it's your opportunity to grow and to get better. I mean, I heard it said before, and I've said it many times over the years, that change is the only constant in life. There's gonna be changes, and you're not gonna like maybe all of them. I mean, we're creatures of habit at the end of the day, and but it's reality. That's what's going to happen is everything's going to change. If you like your life right now, don't worry. It's going to change again. If you don't like your life right now, don't worry. It's going to change again. So there's seasons, you guys, and we have to be okay with that. So like I said, there's reasons, there's seasons, and these are even fewer, but there's the lifetime. And by the lifetime, I mean like you find your purpose. You know, you love what you do, you love what you, you've really found your giftings and you love to give that to the world and you serve a, a higher purpose where um, you are so good at what you do or you love what you do so much. And that could be a hobby, that could be a career, it could be anything, but it's a lifetime because it's just somewhere deep in that DNA or in your soul that that's, you know that's what you're supposed to be doing. And it's easy to get off course sometimes and to um, you know, get off track. And there's a lot of reasons why that happens. But you, um, you've got to see it as um, that's a, it's a real gift when you find that purpose. Um, could be a soulmate. You, know? you meet that person that just does it for you. And they're your everything and you're their everything. And when you find that, it's an amazing thing. You know? Um, I struggle, I think, with the soulmate concept um, because I think one of the things that I think about is, and maybe with age, I become more of a of a realist. I I thought maybe I was becoming more of a pessimist, but I think that um, it, the danger in the soulmate idea is that life changes, right? Like I said, there's reasons, there's seasons, and we all evolve and grow, and we're not the same person we were a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. And if there's the concept of the soulmate, if that is true, and if you, in your heart of hearts, have bought into that idea, and something happens where either the person passes on or the relationship changes and ends, 
then you're emotionally putting yourself in a really tough position to be able to heal and grow and move on. So I say that very carefully because I think my opinions on the soulmate uh, concept has changed quite a bit over the years. And, um, you know, the thing you can do, the only thing you can do is really be your best you. You know, that's what you can control. That's what you um, can hang on to is not losing yourself um, in any situation or any um, relationship. Because if you do that, you're setting yourself up for potentially a lot of pain. So I say soulmate is possibly lifetime, but carefully. Um, and then, of course, your friendships. You know, they say that over the years, if you can count um, or you can count all of your real friends or true friends through thick and thin and through everything that happens on one hand. And it's true. You know, I think when you're really young, you want your social circle to grow and grow and grow and you want more and more friends and somehow it validates you and makes you feel more special or popular or what have you. And then as you get older and your tastes are more refined and you start to realize who you are and what's good for you, there are certain relationships you can keep um, in context and in certain like family that, you know, uh, you know, this person annoys me, but I only have to see them at family gatherings and whatnot, or I can handle this friend in these certain quarters and for a certain period of time and in certain situations. And within those boundaries, you can still have relationship with people. But, um, you know, those true blue lifetime people, you can go years without talking to them. And all of a sudden you see them again and you pick right back up. And we all have stories about that or um, personal stories or we know people that have said that to us. So... Anyways, you guys, just want to give you a little bit of food for thought on that. Um, it just kind of came to me today, and uh, I wanted to try out the new kind of background and all that stuff and throw that at you. Um, so, yeah, on that note, um, something to think about. You know, take an inventory of your life uh, now and again and uh, realize that it's all a beautiful picture that's being painted your life. And um, I feel like I should be writing fucking Hallmark cards or something. Um, anyways... Uh, not to get too deep, but sometimes it goes deep. That's what she said. All right, guys, 5 nothing 100 nothing .com. I am fuck it, and I am out. Take care. Have a great rest of the day.